Katrina and this is my reading wrap up for the month of June. This month I read a total of seven books and I will be reviewing all of those in this video. You saw what they were in that intro and if you want to jump directly to one review or skip over certain reviews you can use the timestamps that are down below and I have linked to all the Goodreads pages for all the books I talk about today down below as well. But before I get into the reviews I want to mention a few channel shout outs. So earlier in this month I got to go to a local book signing for Rick Yancey and I got to meet up with my booktube friends Jenna from the channel Jenna Claire K and Megan from Megan Precourt. And while we were hanging out that day the three of us made some fun collabs together. I posted one on my channel but don't forget to check out the ones over on Jenna's and Megan's channels too because they are some really incredible booktubers that I really really love. I also want to mention a channel that I've only recently started watching and that is RJ from the channel The Secret Stacks. I really appreciate the fact that RJ took the time to make a response video to a discussion video that I posted this month. I made a video earlier this month talking about cultural relativism and how I just process books that are set in other worlds or other time periods. I'll put links to my original video and his response down below in case you want to check out more on that topic. Moving into the book section, as always I'm going to start out with my TBR check-in. In June, I did things a little bit differently. Instead of naming specific books that I wanted to read, I had set a few goals for myself. So I had eight goals, and I did six of those, which is pretty good in my opinion. So now let's talk about what I thought of these books that I did read. I read seven, like I said before, and I had quite a few varying opinions. I had no five-star reads this month, but I had a one and a two-star read. So this month I'll go back to my standard order of reviews where I start with the book I liked the least and work my way up to my favorite read of the month. So starting with that book, I liked the least. That was Wink Poppy Midnight by April Genevieve Tuhalki. This is a YA contemporary novel. There's an event that happens where all three of these characters are involved and supposedly one of them is lying about it and it's up to the reader to figure out who is lying and why they're lying. The biggest problem with this book is that the cover itself, the tagline on the cover, says a hero, a villain, a liar. So you go into the book expecting someone to be lying to you, therefore you second guess everyone's motives. So it really doesn't come as a shock when you find out one of them is lying because you were looking for it anyway. I didn't find there to be any depth to the characters. This was a book that was supposed to be a character study and studying like all these different traits that can go into a character that makes them multidimensional. But this was accomplished through the author just overly stereotyping the characters so that, you know, in the end, oh, the reader would have this big reveal. Oh, they were more than just this one thing. Unfortunately, that over-stereotyping of the characters in the beginning served to make them feel like no more than cardboard cutouts. So I found just no quality to the plot, the mystery. I saw no quality to the characters. And I especially disliked the writing in this book because Tuhaki relied so heavily on repetition. It kind of felt like she just needed to pad her word count. I I've done a dramatic reading from this book in my one star review. I did not like it and I do have that review up if you want to know more. My second least favorite book of the month <sighs> Dragonfly in Amber by Diana Gabaldon. This is the second book in the Outlander series, which is an adult historical fiction series with a sci-fi twist because we have a character from the 1940s that is transported back in time to the 1740s in Scotland. The discussion for this book is going to involve me talking about sexual assault and abuse. If that's something that you are uncomfortable with, you may want to skip over this section, but those are themes that are heavily in this book. I feel like the content is extremely problematic. The men just rape with abandon, basically. Interestingly, she shows that through villains, but she shows the exact same qualities in her heroes. Like, I really don't understand how do you differentiate who the hero and the villains are in a case like this. There's a time where the word rape and sex are used synonymously, which is completely perpetuating rape culture because these are not the same act. One implies consent and the other does not. And that line is said from a husband to a wife as a come on. Like, whoa, you look really good, baby. I want to rape you. Heck no. There's also a scene on page 677 that within like four paragraphs is just the perfect example of an emotionally and physically abusive relationship. The main hero of the story, the romantic figure that we are all supposed to swoon over, is actually making threats and physically shaking his wife. He shows extreme jealousy, he makes demands, he puts her down, and then they build each other up through sex. This is like the epitome of an unhealthy relationship. I've lived through a relationship that was very similar to that where somebody used to insult me and insult me and insult 
insult me so that they could be the one that would bring me back up with compliments. And that creates an emotional dependency. I kind of want to do a whole full review on it, but at the same time, I am just so sick of talking about this book. If you want to know more about the rape culture that is in this series, I can link you to an article down below that covers every single rape scene or threat from book one book one alone. It gives you exact examples and tells you exactly why those things are being trivialized. I gave this one two stars instead of one star only because I did enjoy the sections of the book where Jamie was not around. I kept reading the book because I just wanted to get to the end and see how the two time periods would kind of intertwine and I did feel like it was quality writing even though I did not like the topics presented. I just don't care about this rapey and misogynistic romance anymore so yeah it's it's not for me. I'm finally done with this book. So kind of in the middle here, I gave three stars to The Crown by Kira Caffs, which is the fifth and final book in the selection series. This is a YA romance series. It is in a dystopian world, but the dystopian elements are really not the main focus of it. So The Crown is the second half of the new, like, continuation duology. It's the direct sequel to The Heir, and these are following Princess Edlin, who is having her own selection and trying to choose from 30-some-odd male suitors that have come to the palace to win her heart. I know a lot of people found her as a character to be a real brat in the first book and I did too and I did feel like her character had a lot of room to grow and did that growing in this final book at least I felt like her personality was easier to handle however what I didn't like was that there was not enough romance there was a couple in this book and it was my ship the team that I was on hoping to win but not enough time was spent developing that relationship between these characters like there was zero romantic tension I wanted my good fluffy romance and so the book didn't really deliver what the rest of the series did, so that's kind of why I gave it middle of the road rating. Now that I'm done with this series, I did post a full selection series review that's non-spoiler if you want to hear more about my thoughts on the series overall. Everything else I read this month I gave four stars. So first up is The Last Star by Rick Yancey. This is the third and final book in his Fifth Wave trilogy, which is a YA science fiction post-apocalyptic survival story about characters that are trying to survive an alien invasion. I gave this book four stars because I did feel like it was a pretty good finale. It was pretty solid. It builds upon the things that had been established in book two. We are working towards the goal that we have expected them to be working towards, so that was very fulfilling to see it play out. The ending packed a few punches. It did some things that really impressed me. I thought that events in the end, if you read it, were completely justified and deserved and not a cop-out. But I think the reason that this didn't get any higher of a rating is just because like a lot of the first part kind of felt a little bit repetitive to me. Like, okay, well we're still in the same spot. Why aren't we actually doing things yet? But it did kind of amp up the pace towards the end and, you know, it was overall solid. I did enjoy it. Next, let's talk about If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo, which I also gave four stars. This is a YA contemporary about a trans girl that is at a new high school because she's faced a lot of bullying at her old high school. This book is more of a character study than anything. There's not a whole ton of plot to it. It really just is following Amanda as she is adjusting to a new school, making new friends, reuniting with her father that she hasn't seen in years, and she's also letting herself maybe possibly be open to the idea of starting a romantic relationship. It's a really sweet story with a great impact made that much stronger because the author is a trans woman herself. The book does not shy away from some of the darker topics that a lot of trans people do encounter in their lives. A lot of the flashback scenes do show bullying and suicide. One of the strongest aspects of this book for me, because I am an adult reader, was reading about the relationship between Amanda's parents. I thought it was a really great perspective to the story to show not only what Amanda herself was going through, but the whole family as a unit. I did do a full book review on this one if you want to hear more, but overall I just felt like this was a very, very important important story. I only gave it four stars because as important as it is, there were a few things about the writing that I felt like maybe weren't developed quite enough, but that is sure to grow as Russo writes more books. This was her debut novel and it definitely is a debut not to be missed. Next up is Charmed Thirds by Megan McCafferty, which is the third book in the Jessica Darling series. I would consider this third book to be new adult. However, the first two books are definitely much more YA. This series is told in diary entry format, so you are actually like reading the journal entries that the main character Jessica has written from her day-to-day -day life. And this book itself covers her entire college experience. And a lot of the things that Jessica is into in college are just so completely 
just the, the essence of what going into college and what the college experience was like for me. These books really are a product of their time. They were also written in the mid-2000s, so the way in which Jessica talks, like some of the slang she uses, some of the pop culture references, which there are a ton throughout this series, and also a lot of the judgmental attitudes of Jessica, like in particular, this series does deal a lot with um, fat shaming and slut shaming. I don't always enjoy the things that Jessica gets into, but this is a book and a series that sticks with me. She writes about the most mundane things and you truly get to know her. I think this is a really great series to just get a slice of life character driven story. And last up, also at four stars, is Ivory and Bone by Julie Eshbaugh. This is another debut novel. It's a YA prehistoric time period, but it's about a boy whose clan has no young women in it. His clan doesn't want their line to just kind of, you know, die out. They want to find potential mates for the young boys in their clan. And then one day they meet a few people from a neighboring clan that happens to have like all young women. But these clans have kind of a messy history from each other that the main character Cole does not really know about. So as we get into the story, we start learning about the history of the clans and this land and these people. This is actually a reimagining of Pride and Prejudice. Lizzie is the main male character and Darcy is the female character and she is such a Darcy. It was perfect. Like the reason that I enjoyed this book so much is probably not for the story itself, although it's just, I think it's a very strong debut novel. I really did enjoy the story and the writing, but I just really had a ton of fun finding the Pride and Prejudice parallel, so I, it was a fun thing to read. It's a very unique setting. I haven't read something set in this time period, so it was just very refreshing. Although this was my favorite, most fun read of the month, it did just get four stars. I did feel like at times the info dumps could have been a little bit more subtle. Oh, another thing I want you to know about this book is that it's actually a second person narrative because as the main character is telling this story to a girl from another clan. So a lot of it is like, oh, well, then I saw you, and then we went over here, and then you did this. I really enjoyed that. It was a very interesting narrative, interesting world, interesting reimagining of a classic I love. So I just had a lot of fun with this one. It was a very interesting reading month. Some things I really liked, some things I didn't. If you have any further questions about any of these books that I did not cover in these reviews, don't hesitate to ask me down below. Let me know how many books you read in June, and what was your favorite read of June. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the comments. Bye! I think I got through that review really good and that makes me happy. <gasps> There's a kitten! <gasps> oh! It's so cute and little and fuzzy! <gasps> in the 18... in the late 18... I just feel... Oh, no, no. I am as repetitive as Wink Poppy Midnight. <sighs> Hopefully I can piece any of that together.